Okay, hey YouTube, Todd here again, some guitar guy. First off, and as always, thanks for watching. So, yeah, another video, and today I want to talk about this guy, the Harley Bose Switch, even though that's kind of redundant. It stands for Bose, stands for Vacuum Operated Electrical Switch. So, the Harley Bose system maybe and i'll uh, i'll leave this up for a minute this actually comes from this page on sportsterpedia which i'll link ton of information on sporties uh and yeah please it's a i've used it it's a, a great resource if you're not familiar with it <clears throat> but i want to talk about what those is where it is uh and what it does in the ultimate question you know to those or not to those uh, to borrow very poorly from shakespeare should you uh keep those if it should you delete it if it has been deleted should you and you ride one of these older bikes should you consider um uh, reinstalling those and getting it back up and running and I'll go ahead in reverse order and get the punchline yes absolutely if your bike came with those uh, it's gonna run better and be happier and that's gonna make you happier so uh, yes absolutely every day of the week and twice on Sunday and we're talking a lightly modified bike and hardly speak that would be you know up to stage one with intake and, and exhaust now a heavily modified bike you probably already have an aftermarket ignition uh, control module and some of those are actually built to work with those uh, but uh, that that's kind of beyond the scope of this so we're talking basically a stock or lightly modified uh, modified bike so what is it well you know functions in the name vacuum operated and here's the vacuum port which connects to the uh, back of the uh, back of the carburetor uh, and it's just an on off switch vacuum operated on off when it's and it allows here the function causes changes in the ignition timing well why would you want that for a lot of reasons, basically rideability, uh, I, which would include everything in my mind, throttle response, um, cold and warm starting, uh, idle, na the nature of the idle, um, throttle, uh, did I say throttle response? Anyway, basically everything that makes the bike enjoyable to ride. Plus, being on the proper ignition curve, as we see here, is uh, going to clean up not the fuel mixture, but when the ignition occurs during the piston's journey toward top dead center. So it's going to it's going to save you a little bit of fuel uh, and probably clean up your emissions just a little bit. <clears throat> now, this has been around since eighty. No, yes, 84 was the debut of the Evo engine in the big twins. Um, Sporties wouldn't get it until 86, but Harley thought enough of the results of this switch and being able to bounce um, dynamically between the two preset ignition curves in the ignition control module that some of the old Ironhead uh, Sporties came with those and there have even been i've uh, read there have been tests with even uh the the pre-evo the shovel heads with great effect and they've been installed on those bikes as well so it's a great little um simple but really effective way to make sure that the spark is occurring when it needs to based on your engine load in this column which is basically interpreted by um, the level of vacuum in the engine. Okay, so that's maybe the greatest um, or, or one of the greatest uh, best measuring points. So yeah, that's what it does. It basically determines the level of vacuum, sends a signal to the ICM down here, and the ICM switches to one of its two 
um, preset ignition curves. So yeah. Uh, now where is it? Where do you find it? Big Twins, I'm sure it's similar, uh, but I don't know exactly. I don't know those bikes. On the Sporties, it is under the tank and behind the carb. Uh, you can, I had the tank off dealing with the uh, tank rust issue, which is another video for this, this vintage, uh, this era of bike. Um, but, uh, and it, and still ended up having to take the carb off. My those was in place and the vacuum line was connected, of course, or I would have a massive vacuum leak and the bike would have ran like crap. Um, <clears throat> but the electrical connector on the back of the switch itself had been pulled out and there wasn't, there's just not room in there to get my finger in there to, to get the connector back in. And it had deformed a little bit from, uh, just the heat. I mean, it's between the jugs under the tank, uh, over the crankcase. So yeah, a lot of heat in there. Now, why do people disconnect these or delete them all together? I don't know. Uh, human nature, people thinking they're smarter than the Harley engineers. And, but in my case, or in this bike's case, of course, I don't have any idea who uh, disconnected those, but I would have thought immediately the owner would have been like, mm, no, because it was. Uh, compared before and after it's w with those connected it's much easier to start it takes less choke um, it has it doesn't warm up any quicker really but it has um, much less um, cold natured uh, characteristics because the spark is you know is happening at the proper time if you if you delete those the icm will default to this curve which is more you see wide open throttle quick throttle inputs and above a quarter throttle so more accelerating rather than idling or steady state you know just cruising around um and then the idle, the you know maybe the the biggest uh, wow for me was, I mean literally, <clears throat> I have no doubt if I go fill the tank to the brim and start it and leave <laughs> and come back, um, it'll still be idling. Where with those disconnected, um, I mean even fully, it's like it idled worse the warmer it got. But at a uh, at an extended red light, you know, I would find myself taking the slack out of the throttle cables and wishing the light would change so I don't have to just sit there blipping the throttle. And this bike's pretty loud um, with the uh, Screaming Eagle baffle taken out. So, <clears throat> I mean, it sounds great, it does. But uh, yeah, everybody don't want to everybody don't agree with me or have the same tastes. Um, so yeah, uh, it, the, the idle is probably the biggest thing and, and overall rideability. But I would have thought that whoever the owner was at the time would have been like, mm, no. Uh, and of course you don't get any more horsepower. The bike's going to run a little more efficiently, save you some gas, clean up your emissions, but there's no, uh, there's no hidden horsepower here. So that's kind of my answer. Now, one caution, um, let me show you this page and then let me go to the uh, Harley parts diagram. So here it is and we see it's not really a cheap um, replacement at, at over a hundred bucks. You can find these aftermarket. Um, Dennis Kirk and I don't know, uh, probably just about all uh, suppliers will, uh, will have this aftermarket for about half this price. The challenge number first of all they're probably not going to come with this bracket right let me yeah with this bracket and this bracket comes with a keeper which i can't zoom in enough to show uh, but a retaining ring on this side um and that's going to be kind of a bitch to get the, the switch itself out of this bracket. If you order it from Harley, it comes with the bracket, the retainer, 
and all you need is the uh, the bolt the nut and the washer and you know make the connection and you're you're you know you're off uh, so be careful with that the other thing if you do order uh, aftermarket this is vacuum operated right and let's get back to this one here's this on the uh, on the end the silicone plug I think Harley used the same basic switch or the same switch on all these models for 20 years until the big twins went to fuel injection and then in 04 uh, the sporties were still carbureted, but they went to a map sensor and a more advanced uh, or actually a true engine control module. So for the sporties, some of the, like I said, some of the iron heads, you'll have to check your parts, uh, diagrams, whatever, to see if yours came with it. But definitely the Evo sporties up through 03 but they are set to different trigger points based on the engine. So the Sporties, I think, is around three inches of uh, mercury. You could, so if you went with an aftermarket one, my point is the danger is if it's set too high or too low, it's not going to work. Um, <clears throat> if you, for example, bought one and the trigger point was, say, six inches of mercury, for one of the big twins, it's not going to work. And, if, and vice versa, if you ride a big twin and you've got one that's set for a sporty, well, it's going to stay on all the time and you, it'll never uh, switch over. I think, I think I'm saying that right. Yeah, it'll never switch over to uh, to the retarded curve. So just be, uh, be mindful of that. And let me show uh, just a couple of pictures here of uh, the one that was on my bike. Now on the Hugger, the, the um, Vose was there and connected. Um, but for whatever reason, they lost the bolt and the nut or something. It was just dangling. And I think one of the, it was up against one of the fins and it started melting it. But it did, the bike rode well. Uh, it was a little... I don't know, maybe those had, had quit working. I didn't replace it, but I did remount it. And uh, I don't know, just never went any further with it. So that's what mine looked like, but I have reconnected this, uh, this connector to the switch. So there's just a shot of the plug and the bracket. And if I zoom in a little bit, we can see this retainer. I mean, you could get that out you know, but you're going to bend it and it's probably not going to work again. But, you know, that looks intact. Nobody had uh, gone in and tried to be the smart guy and adjust those, which you would, you can do that when there's a little screw in there. You'd need a, a vacuum, hand vacuum pump and a uh, multimeter. Uh, and we see here the, uh, that looks like that's kind of a weird I don't know if that's silicone or what, but I have it plugged back in. But when I uh, found it, that's what I found. And we see it looks a little bit deformed and it was actually kind of twisted um, down there. So I just, my solution was just to order a brand new switch. Yeah, it's a hundred bucks, but A, I know it works. This is 22 years old uh, and I don't have to worry about this funky, you know, whatever they've done probably pulling it out uh, deformed it so I don't have to worry about uh, an electrical you know bad electrical connector but um, that's uh, and it's you know that's kind of my take on those is uh, yeah absolutely uh, use it give it your own uh, you know your own test disconnect it that would be the easy now I don't know why they didn't disconnect here instead of deforming this uh just pulling it out of the uh and maybe even taping this up thankfully they, this was connected so i don't really have to worry about any uh corrosion here but uh the bike runs uh tons better um is it, very noticeable uh and yeah for my money uh those for the win so that's all I have for today. Uh, please remember to do the YouTube thing. And until next time, two wheels down. Thanks, guys.